All right, my battery's getting low, but I want to show quickly some of the shuttles that I've been playing with. I'm by no means an expert at decorating these things, but these are mostly uh, the clover type shuttle. Some of them are clover and some of them are the generic ones that look like clover. And what I've done is used UV resin to smooth out these little indentions that are on there so that I could decoupage. Some of them I didn't take quite about uh, enough time to fill in the holes, but they're fine. So these two here, I used um, this napkin. I used a green section and this blue section. This was an old dictionary page. Um, this came from a portion of that napkin. These three all came from this beach napkin. You'll see the, the beach umbrella there, and you'll see the, the clouds here and uh, the horizon on that one. So this one came from one of these butterflies. And I used uh, gift wrapping tissue paper uh, for these two right here, and it works really well. I was surprised at how well it came out. It doesn't crinkle as bad as the napkins do, um, but you do have to separate the plies. There's, there's another ply there, and it, it takes a little bit of work to get the, the uh, layers separated. These three came from this peacock napkin. There's some of this section I used and I used I actually used um, one of the sections that it had a large area of that for this one but it barely showed up on the uh, the shuttle but it gives a little faint design and then this one I think I had already showed um, that was um, a portion of the napkin. Some of these blue areas like that. So you, you can take you don't even have to take a, a whole bird or a whole flower or whatever. You can just take a little piece of a uh, napkin and bring out a design that you would not expect to, to have, sort of like this um, beach umbrella. So I thought it was kind of neat, the surprises that you get when you start gluing these pieces of uh, paper on. So let's get right to the video. Uh, showing the steps that I used. Um, you can use varnish instead of the UV resin. You can start with the UV resin to smooth out anything. And you can use varnish, which I've never tried before. Um, I, I really don't can't tell you anything about the using uh, varnish. But the one thing you need to be careful of is not to get any resin in the little areas where there's a, a gap like that. So. Using UV resin, clear, the hard type. I've had this one for quite a while, so I just pour a little into one of these little paint cups. And just get any old cheap um, paintbrush. Sorry, my voice hasn't woken up yet this morning. And you just drip it into the area that you want to be solid. And we're going to let this sit for a few minutes because the resin is going to want to level out. And it, it doesn't matter if you get a little. Try to be as neat as possible, but we're going to sand this later anyway, so just try to be neat with it, but don't obsess if you get any over the edge. But I'm just trying to make sure all these little crevices get some resin in there. And you get the idea. And I am going over the edge just a little. But again, we're going to sand this. And sometimes I don't worry about filling it in completely because sometimes you just can't tell. And then there's another little indention here that I usually don't worry about it because it's so shallow and my decoupage doesn't have a problem filling that in but that'll level off a little also so once um, we cure this we can get them out of the 
little oven. And uh, this one I was real messy with. I was just kind of experimenting. But I don't know if you can tell on the camera that this hole has been um, filled in with the resin. And I did this one also and it kind of spilled out over the edge. Okay, this is the little uh, resin curing UV light oven that I have. I call it an oven, but it's made for fingernails, I think. But it also came with a little mirror uh, base to slide in and out. But I never did use uh, the tracks on there to put the mirror in and out because um, it was hard to slide it in and out and I was always knocking my little uh, items over. So I bought a, um, a little cheap hand mirror from the uh, dollar store and I use it. Now this is the one that we just put the resin on. I'm trying to hold the camera steady. And I just slide it in there. And then there's um, a way to set at the back of the machine. Let's see if I can get back there. I can't really do it, but there's a little button that you can set, I think one minute, 30 minutes, or three minutes. And just go by whatever your uh, resin tells you. And then I have the on off button here. I don't even know if you can buy this one anymore. I've had it a while. So I've turned the unit on. I've set my time on the back. And I like to put a little dish towel over it. Mostly, if I have a project that I'm working on next to the machine, I don't want any of the UV light to either get to my eyes or to the project that I'm working on. So I usually just put my unit in the kitchen and, um, and then go from there. So I just hit the um, start button and you can see the little blue light is on on the inside now so I let that cure for the recommended time and that's really all that you do with this all right I got it zoomed in a little bit better these are some I just got out of the little oven you just get some sandpaper and you can tell whether it's still a little tacky or not and then you just sand over the top. You're gonna to have to do that anyway to do your decoupage. So you just sand it until it seems flat. And any of those edges that you spilled over a little bit, just sand over it. And that is pretty flat. So I'm gonna do my decoupage over. This one looks pretty good, so this one's ready to go. So do that for all the ones that you've um, you've already cooked <laughs> or baked, whatever you want to call it. This one's one I've let sit for a little while to let the resin kind of level off. So this one still needs to be cured. So that's all you do for the, the resin side of this thing. And then we'll get to the decoupage next. And then it, uh, some of these I... Um, I had already cured and I noticed that I had some little places that didn't have resin in them so I went back and just dropped a little dab of resin in those little spots and now these need to be sanded. This was the first one I experimented with. This is a clover bobbin shuttle and when I chose my napkin design I didn't realize there was a piece of another leaf in the design that was overlapping my little blue section that I was wanting to um, decoupage on here. But I did decoupage all the way to the tip. So um, you're going to want to sand all the shiny places off, just lightly. You don't have to get real aggressive with it. Just make sure it's not shiny anymore. And then we're going to use Mod Podge, but you uh, choose a napkin. In my case, I was wanting this little blue thing, and I ended up getting more on it than I wanted. So I'm going to choose. Um, I like napkins because the color of the shuttle is going to come through. In this case, you can see the brown shuttle. So it seems to blend. It looks more painted on, in my opinion. So I'm going to choose a napkin that I think will look good with this little green shuttle. 
and I think I'm going to choose one of these pieces on here. It doesn't really matter what you choose. So I'm going to find a section that I like and I'm going to cut a little piece that's a little bit bigger than my shuttle. Okay, I will say that it is extremely difficult to get your design centered on here. I mean, you can fold it. I've done that before and made creases in it to because it's hard to tell where you're laying that thing. So, I think even a design that's like like off center would be easy. So, I think for this demonstration, I'm just going to not try to center this flower on there. And see, and like even this one, I'm getting two flowers on there, just a portion of it. You can trim these out and just put them on like stickers, but I like the the whole thing covered over. So, once you cut out your piece of your napkin, you wanna, I hope I'm staying on the, the camera here because I've got it zoomed in. You wanna separate that ply that's on there just very carefully because you want this really thin and that's gonna make this even more transparent. And I see a little hole in there, so I may try to avoid that hole and just do something like that. So let me get my Mod Podge ready and I'll be right back. All right, I've added a little tiny bit of water to my um, Mod Podge. Most of the time I just use it full strength. This is a little more watery than I normally do, but really all you want on your shuttle is just enough to grab the napkin because it's so thin the napkin is that if you put too much glue on your shuttle then um, it's going to crinkle the it's going to crinkle your decoupage or your your napkin the magazine pages tend to not do that as bad badly or however you want to say that I'm trying to figure out where my little hole is that I want to avoid there's a a hole in my um, paper here so again it's going to be hard to center this so trying to locate that hole so I'm just going to turn it upside down and try it this way to try to just eyeball where I want this thing I like the shape of those leaves so I'm just going to stick it on there like that and let it grab it and then smooth it out so that doesn't seem to be crinkling my napkin too much so it's enough to hold it on and I may need to add a little bit on the end of my shuttle there less is better because you may end up with a um, crinkly mess if you don't. So I'm going to let this dry, make sure my paper is sticking like I want it to all the way around. I'll let this dry for a little bit. You don't have to let it dry all the way in the beginning. I can see my little hole that was in my paper turned up right on the edge of my shuttle. But I think it's going to be okay. So let we'll let this dry for a few minutes and then I'll be right back. Okay, I'm just going to trim this just a little bit just to get the bulk of this paper off of here. This is not completely dry, but since I put the uh, glue on pretty thinly, um, it's good enough. I do see I'm going to have a little blue area there that I didn't want. So again, it's it's kind of hard to get your design positioned just the way you want it and you end up with little things that you didn't want on there. So probably take a little bit more time than than I did. So you just take a um I use these 
uh, sanding blocks that are spongy and you want to sand down so I'm, what I'm doing is cutting the edge of the paper so you just kind of to me it's easier to get a clean trim than trying to get your scissors in there because I've messed up some of my things by using scissors and um, ended up having to take all of the decoupage. I ended up having to sand the whole thing off and start over. So that just gives you a nice clean edge. In my opinion, this is the way I do it. And I can tell some of this didn't get glued down. So I'm going to come back with a little bit more glue on those areas. But you get the idea of what to do with this thing whenever it's whenever it's finished drying and then you, you're able to get a nice clean edge and I never pull on the paper I make sure that all the edges have been cut with the sandpaper because you could still at this point you can still pull it off of the shuttle and seeing that's not glued down so I'm going to leave this just like that. I'm going to come back with a little bit of glue there and let it set a little bit longer. I want to mention also that in most decoupage projects, after you get your initial layer on there, most of the time you come back with a thin layer of glue across the top. But when I tried that, my napkin crinkled up more than I wanted it to. So I prefer this method so but if you mess the whole thing up it's easy to get this off and start over so it's not a total loss once you put the resin on it it's pretty much it's got to be the finished product so um, I, I saved the resin for last when I've got everything just the way I want it so let that one sit for a little while and I'm going to uh, decoupage a few more of these should be dried enough for me to finish my little trim job here so I'm just coming off the ridge and sanding downwards I don't want to sand toward the sh top of the shuttle because it'll just pull the paper right off because it, this is just glued on with just a thin layer of Mod Podge I do have a, another little sanding pencil kind of thing that I, I use sometimes on this because you get down to the tip of this shuttle, it takes a little bit more time, but I'm getting it. All right, so that's loose there. And I don't want to tear the rest of it off, I want to make sure it's all sand it away. This also blends the edges a little bit better in my opinion. but still connected. So that's loose. A couple of more spots. I'm trying my best to stay in the camera so that looks really really good. And if you've got some that the glue dripped over the edge you can continue to sand that off if it bothers you and the little blue thing that I was worried about is gone so this worked out pretty well so I like the way that looks and I can use varnish or I can use resin and I'm gonna come back with resin on the top of this and this one I think I only did a couple of um, coats of the resin on the top because this is one of those bobbin shuttles and they're supposed to expand enough to get the bobbin in and out and even though the resin is sort of flexible it does tighten this up a little bit more which is not a problem when you're when you're actually using it still spins the way it should but it's just getting the bobbin in and out I think if I put too much resin on here, or even if I do it double-sided with resin, it may stiffen it up too much for me to be able to flex it enough to get that bobbin in and out. I really don't want to run uh, a shuttle just to test it out, but 
uh, that's my theory anyway. So I've got another one here that's drying and um, so I'm going to go ahead and put a thin coat of resin on this one. So let me get my little jar of resin and I like to go less to begin with and then if you're going to add more coats of resin if there's some defects that you want to cover up um, you'll need to sand between, or I usually sand between uh, the layers. After this layer cures, then I would sand it. So as you can see, the color of the shuttle is starting to come through the napkin to give this a painted on look. thought about using some book page, some old Reader's Digest book pages because they're kind of a, a thin paper also and they're not coated paper like magazine pages sometimes have a lot of coating on them. So I thought book pages would look cute on this too. Really the sky is the limit. And if I don't like the way it comes out all I have to do is sand it and cover it over with something else. And I'm going to also let this one sit after I brush on this thin layer of resin and that'll give the resin time to um, level out. It just takes a few minutes. And that gives me time to work on some others while I'm waiting for this to settle down. And then I'll put it in the little curing oven. got a few uh, ideas and some inspiration on decorating your your own shuttles and for me it was fun playing with the uh, UV resin and being able to smooth this out so that my decoupage would lay a little bit easier on there and um, so uh, for my um, resin that I'm using I had to go a little bit longer than the three to four minutes that they uh, they recommended uh, especially in the beginning when I was filling in this this hole in, in the middle I went I think about five minutes so I would try three to four minutes at a time until the um, resin is not tacky anymore and you're going to want to sand uh, in between the layers uh, because it's going to be kind of crinkly with the napkin right at first so if you sand and then put more resin, let the resin level out and then cure it again, then you'll, you can finally get to the results that you're wanting. I would not um, let this get too thick here because you'll end up having to resharpen your point. I found that on one of mine, some of the resin got really thick on the end and my, my little pick wasn't as pointed as I want it to be. So I hope you enjoy this video and get some ideas of your own.